We are in the final chapter, the Autonomic Nervous System, Chapter 15, to finish off the course. And it's a relatively short chapter, so let's get started. Back to our flow chart. Uh, last bit to cover here is the autonomic nervous system, which consists of the sympathetic and parasympathetic division. That's what this chapter on. So remember, these are only motor fibers of the peripheral nervous system. If you go down the flowchart, PNS, which is cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Uh, motor, that means fibers running from the CNS to effectors. Which effectors? Well, not skeletal muscle, that's somatic but to smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. That's what the autonomic nervous system is. So here's the recap, the ANS, the autonomic nervous system. There's the effectors, they innervate smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. It's subconscious, so we don't consciously control what's going on in these, these motor processes. Uh, other names for the ANS are right here, but you won't see those again. And just recall that in the somatic nervous system, the effectors are skeletal muscle and they're voluntary. That's not what we're covering here. We're covering the autonomic nervous system, which is involuntary uh, because these processes happen automatically. So think autonomic, automatic. If you haven't heard this enough, here it is one more time. The effectors for the somatic nervous system are skeletal muscles for the autonomic nervous system, cardiac and smooth muscle in glands. All right, these next two slides have a lot of text, but there'll be a figure following these next two slides. Well, I'll explain it all over again, but uh, let's go through it. Uh, motor or efferent pathways are somatic or autonomic. Of course, this chapter is on the autonomic nervous system. Uh, recall that in the somatic nervous system, you have one fiber or axon of a neuron. We called it last chapter a lower motor neuron which extends from the spinal cord to the muscle, right, at the neuromuscular junction. You just have this one neuron leaving the spinal cord going all the way to the skeletal muscle. But in the autonomic nervous system, it's a two neuron chain leaving the spinal cord. So where those two neurons interact is at a synapse. So you're gonna have uh, a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. Basically, that's the first and the second neuron in the two neuron chain. And this will be a little more clear once we get to the picture in a couple of slides from here. When we covered the somatic nervous system, you, write, you might remember at the neuromuscular junction, the neurotransmitter that was used was acetylcholine, or ACH for short, and its effects on the skeletal muscle is always stimulatory. But in the ANS, the preganglionic fibers, remember it's a two neuron chain, pre and post ganglionic fibers. Well, the preganglionic fibers, just like the somatic, release ACH or acetylcholine, but the postganglionic fibers have choice. It, they could release acetylcholine or norepinephrine, NE. Sometimes you'll see epinephrine or E instead, which are basically the same thing. Uh, so their effect could be stimulated stimulatory or it could be inhibitory. So let's kind of look at a picture to organize what we just went through in these uh, these past two slides. All right, this is a nice summary of our motor division of the peripheral nervous system. Here's what we covered in previous chapters, the somatic nervous system, at least the motor portion of the somatic nervous system. So there's the cell body of the neuron in the central nervous system, in the spinal cord, right? But it leaves the spinal cord and then it works its way to a muscle, a skeletal muscle, and at the neuromuscular junction, at the synapse, acetylcholine is released and that's stimulatory to make the muscle contract. Uh, and as you can see, it's just one neuron in the peripheral nervous system when we're talking about the somatic division. But when we get to the autonomic nervous system, which this chapter is on, sympathetic and parasympathetic, which we haven't worked out the differences yet. Um, let's not look at this yet in the center where you see the adrenal medulla. So let's just look at uh, these two uh, pathways here. So in both path pathways, you can see it's a two neuron chain. So you have a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. Where the synapse is, well, that's where the cell body is of the postganglionic neuron, which means it's gonna be thicker at this point. Uh, that's what a ganglion is, right, in the peripheral nervous system, a cluster of cell bodies. 
And then, well, if we, that's sympathetic, if we look at parasympathetic, same thing. We have a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. There's our synapse at the ganglion. Uh, next thing that we looked at uh, on the previous slide were the neurotransmitters. Well, the preganglionic neuron always releases acetylcholine, like you can see there in the synapse. That's sympathetic, parasympathetic, preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine. So that's always the same. Uh, preganglionic will re release acetylcholine. And then the postganglionic neuron, we'll see, well, in the sympathetic releases norepinephrine and E. Sometimes you'll just see an E, which means epinephrine, which is basically the same thing as norepinephrine. But in the parasympathetic division, you can see the postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine. So we have a lot of acetylcholine in the, uh, in the somatic nervous system. That's the neurotransmitter used. In the uh, parasympathetic division of the ANS, it's always acetylcholine. In the sympathetic division of the ANS, the preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, but that postganglionic neuron releases epinephrine or norepinephrine. So we can also say the only fiber that releases norepinephrine is sympathetic postganglionic. All the other fibers release acetylcholine. And the last point is that whether it's acetylcholine here at the effector, remember smooth muscle, cardiac muscle or glands. Um, acetylcholine or norepinephrine is used in the ANS, depending on sympathetic or parasympathetic. But the point I was getting at is these neurotransmitters here at the effector could be stimulatory or could be inhibitory.